around for the last five years, see something really different? Some uh, uh, changes that are taking place here in the Indian in Delhi. Two topics I want to talk about. Uh, the first being the growth of specifically what is the growth uh, potential of the, uh, the S16 IN that we're offering uh, for MMR. Are you bad here, yeah? For MMRCA. Uh, I think it's very important. Uh, the S16 has a long history of, of uh, cooperation with Air Force and around the world. And it's important that everyone understand that the S16 uh, we're offering here in India, the S16 IN, uh, is by no means uh, the end of the line for the S16. In fact, it represents the beginning of what we think great future for the S-16. I also want to address the uh, specifically the engine on the F-16 IM Supervivor. And this is important for a couple of reasons. One, again, to emphasize, uh, tying back to the growth discussion about uh, uh, how the uh, engine we're offering for the F-16 IM enables uh, growth on the F-16 frame, as well as address some of the issues that we see occasionally coming up about, well, is the single engine aircraft the right way to go? And uh, hopefully we'll dispel uh, some myths and uh, have some discussion about that as well. In addition, beyond the safety of single engine aircraft, there's some topics of uh, life cycle cost and uh, maintenance efficiencies and reliability that I want to touch on too. I also want to discuss the role that General Electric plays as, as the supplier of the engine for the S16 IM. Just to, to frame everybody, I think those of you that have seen some of my briefings before are familiar with this. Uh, the S-16 IM, we consider it the ultimate fourth-gen fighter. Let's be very clear about this. This is a fourth-generation fighter competition that the RC represents. We think we bring the best fourth-generation fighter, the ultimate fourth-generation fighter, to the competition. Uh, the uh, features that are highlighted on this slide, I think, uh, simplify why we make that claim. The active AESA radar, which uh, has been operationally proven on the S-16, Shown that we can export this, uh, this radar technology to other countries. We intend to do here. Uh, the same radar that we brought to India and demonstrated in Bangalore to the Indian Air Force during field trials. Uh, advanced cockpit that the S 69 represents, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that and what the growth potential is there. Systems like the home mounted queuing system, again, the front line, <coughs> state of the art sensors, wep uh, weapons. Uh, represented by such things as the home management system. We're going to discuss the engine itself. Very important to, to talk about the, or to mention the IF required capabilities that the S-16 IM brings. Uh, obviously, we started with the configuration S-16 uh, that already existed in the Block 60, but we've gone beyond that, and the S-16 IM represents a further stage of development for the S-16 beyond the Block 60, largely by incorporation of the latest technologies and those required capabilities in the Air Force. Specifically asked for. Another reason we like to think that the S 16 IN is the ultimate fourth generation fighter is because of the fact that it does have a distinct tie and a family heritage to the only two fifth generation fighters in the world today, and that's the F 22 and the F 35. Lockheed Martin is in a very unique position to be able to make this play. We're the only manufacturer in the world that is fielding fifth generation fighters today and will be for, it for the foreseeable future. Having this family of aircraft, the F-16, the F-35, and the F-22, has enabled us to create this synergy, this circle of technology flow back and forth between these platforms. So there are a range of key technologies that are shown here that, that uh, some of them are fundamental to fifth generation technology, some are enhanced to fifth generation technology, but they all share a common ancestry, a common core, a common uh, development process, and a common team of engineers and scientists within Lockheed Martin who develop these technologies. We're going to talk about a couple of these today, primarily in the engine issue. We'll come back to that. First, I want to go into the growth story of the S-16. Now, when we talk about growth, it's very important to understand where you're coming from. I'm going to spend some time uh, trying to differentiate between growth of the S-16 IN versus the growth potential of other S-16s or other variants of other aircraft. So where are we starting? Well, we're starting, as I showed on the, on the ultimate fourth gen fighter, at a very high level. Uh, we, uh, continually been improving the S-16 throughout its entire life. And we've gotten to the stage now where we're confident to offer the S-16 IM. The India is the most advanced S-16 ever produced. It has capabilities far beyond any other S-16. And the engine, which we'll discuss, and given its range, additional weapons that meet the requirements of the Indian Air Force, 
and then any necessary upgrades to the avionics system again to provide the capabilities that meet the requirements of the MRC RFP. Changes to the sensors, the cockpit, data links, all this to, to elevate the S69M to a step beyond any other S16 that's been produced. So we're starting with a very high level of capability from which to grow. Now, why is growth important? Well, the S16 will fly for a long time. Uh, typically, we rate the S16 for 8,000 flight hours. That's a lot of, of, uh, of uh, span of years that the S16 will operate in. We have uh, aircraft within the U.S. inventory, U.S. Air Force inventory, that are that have gone even beyond the 8,000 hours and will be flying for uh, upwards of 40 years projected before they retire. So you've got a lot of time there. Exceptional long service life. Well, during this time, this 40 years, let's say, of service life, 8,000 hours, flight hours, there's going to be a lot of reasons to upgrade the aircraft. I've, I've listed there expanded mission roles. Uh, for instance, uh, in uh, Current operations of the S-16 is involved in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, for instance, we're continually finding new roles, new missions for the S-16 to fly. And so we're making continual changes to the U.S. Air Force F-16s in the field in many cases to allow them to better adapt to some unique missions and requirements that are driven by the, uh, the, the environment they're operating in. So this is real-time uh, changes in roles and missions of the S-16. And, and very easy to accomplish these on the S-16 because we do have a growth-oriented architecture. Improved combat capabilities, a prime example of this is incorporation of new weapons. Within the U.S. Air Force inventory of F-16s, the F-16 is considered, within the U.S. Air Force inventory of fighter aircraft in general, the F-16 is considered the, uh, the standard by which all uh, other weapon integrations are first accomplished. So you'll see all the new precision weapons, uh, JDAMs, JSALs, uh, typically get incorporated on the F-16 first. The reason being that the F-16 represents the backbone of the U.S. Air Force portable fighter fleet. It has an architecture that is amenable to integrated weapons on a, a quick and cost-effective manner. So weapons, uh, new weapons are always coming on to the F-16 to improve combat capability. This is something that the Indian Air Force has also asked for in the RFP. Another thing is reduced ONS costs, uh, operations, operations and support costs for the aircraft. As the aircraft uh, is in service and uh, develops time, there'll be a need to, uh, as anyone knows, uh, as time goes on, technology evolves. It gets harder and harder to support older technologies, trying to find parts for your 10-year-old your car versus your uh, new car off the showroom. And so one of the approaches that we take to the S-16 is by continually upgrading the systems on the aircraft. We stay a step ahead of the obsolescence. Uh, and uh, very important reason to upgrade the aircraft. And so it really highlights the fact that you need a couple of things in order to have a growth strategy for your aircraft. One, you need the technologies that are driving the growth itself, and you also need a strategy for how you're going to incorporate those, those uh, technologies. Well, we've shown this again with S-16s, not only within the U.S. Air Force inventory, but S-16s around the world that have participated in a continually, continual upgrade program for S-16s. always keep them on the forefront of combat capability by expanding mission roles improving combat capability. So what have we done to the S-16 IN specifically to uh, enable this kind of growth? There's some distinct architectural features of the S-16 IN. I've highlighted three of them here. For instance, the use of commercial off-the-shelf processors, which is uh, shown here by COTS. So the same processors that are going into the, into the computers in the commercial world today are going to be incorporated into the S-16. So this puts us on a much faster uh, uh, evolutionary platform, evolutionary basis for expanding the cap processing capability <coughs> of the S-16 as opposed to dedicated military processors that uh, the previous aircraft version had used. We incorporated an advanced fiber optic network in the S-16IN. Again, by taking advantage of rapid advancements in, in technology in the commercial world, incorporating that into the S-16IN gives us a, a data backbone, if you will, of allowing us to uh, hook systems together and transfer the massive amounts of data that today's roles and missions require and the sensors we brought on board the aircraft to, to uh, effectively take advantage of that. Another example is the use of uh, digital video throughout the uh, S-16 IM. So all the displays now are digitally based. The video is passed across digitally across the fiber optic network. That allows us to do things like 
high resolution picture within picture displays that we showed here. Uh, those of you that have flown the cockpit demonstrator for the S16I have also uh, seen how this works. The extreme flexibility and situational awareness of that kind of capability gives to the pilot flying the aircraft. These are examples of the kind of architectural changes fundamental to the aircraft we made specifically for the S16IM. 